Great to be here. And the tallest coast we've ever had, and the only coast that we've ever had, I think that can dunk John Bodwell. Johnny the Bod. I just want to I want to clarify, I cannot dunk anymore. Any longer. And if I tried to, I would get halfway up the net, and I would fall, and I would I would be injured yeah. for a while. And, I'm, and now that now that Michelle is here, I am no longer the uh, the youngest person in the room, you know. <laughs> nor the best looking one. Nor I'm no longer the best. Well, thank you for clarifying. Yes. Thanks, <laughs> that would be Michelle Terwilliger. Good morning, Michelle. To you. Good morning, guys. Welcome How are back. You doing? Thank you. Making your annual pilgrimage in October to the TV station here. Absolutely. Right. It's Medicare well, season. Medicare season. <laughs> when when does the uh, the open enrollment period begin? October fifteenth through December seventh. October 15th, so we're just a few days away from that, but you're allowed to start talking about it now. At, uh, as of October 1, we are allowed to start talking about the plans for the new year, um, and October 15th, we can start enrolling people. What is the harm in talking about it if someone has a question in April? Well, the new plans don't come out. I mean, we, we start getting new plans in September, but by federal law, we're not allowed to talk about them. But, and we're not allowed to talk about changes. But, John, I get phone calls, robo phone calls, 12 months a year wanting to talk about Medicare and the changes. Why, well, what are they doing besides aggravating me? What are they doing wrong? <laughs> um, what are they, I, I, there's a, such a long list of what they're yeah. doing wrong. Yeah. They are in foreign call centers, generally the Philippines, India, Bangladesh, and they're making illegal phone calls. And they're just illegal phone call after illegal phone call after illegal phone call. And then once they get somebody on the phone who will actually talk to them, then they transfer it to what they call the supervisor, who is someone who speaks a little bit, bit better than the first person. And then eventually they, they transfer it to some sort of a, a licensed agent in a call center um, who basically, I, I like to refer to them as scumbags. I think the people yeah. who are, are participating in these illegal phone calls that come in, I think they're scumbags. I mean, it's uh, terrible the way seniors seniors get taken advantage yeah. of by these calls and annoyed. I let me just say one thing. I am on one of these lists. I get twenty twenty five calls a day asking me about yeah. my Medicare. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you, John. There, uh, there's a lot of ways you can describe them, but there are individuals that do respond, and there are individuals that sign up. What do these companies offer that? that is of any benefit at all uh, to the uh, to the individuals? Well, that's a great question. What they do is eventually they transfer them to someone in America who is a licensed agent here. Um, sometimes they know what they're doing, sometimes they don't. But the one thing they do not have is they do not have a vested interest in the people. They don't. It, it, when you're enrolled through a call center, that person doesn't become your agent. You never talk to that person again. Yeah. I understand that, John, but my point is, you said earlier, we have open enrollment from October the 15th, I think December the 7th, like that. These calls come in 12 months a year. Oh, okay. What, what happens when uh, someone that's willing to listen to them, what is offered to them at that time? Well, that's a great question. This past year and until October 1st of this year, there was an extra enrollment period for people with Medicaid or what's called the low income subsidy or extra help where they were allowed to change plans one time every quarter. Okay. Which is something that w allowed these people to call all year long, just trying to get lower income people to switch and switch back and forth. And they put commercials out there offering, you know, you'll, you'll get a food card, a flex card for three, $4,000 call this number. And I have clients of mine reach out to me all the time about that. And, Plans like that do exist, but they are merely for people with Medicare and Medicaid. But you say the law has changed. The law has changed where now um, they are not allowed. That, that enrollment period where they were allowed to change every quarter is no longer in effect. Does so, that mean after, say, middle of December, we'll no longer get these robocalls? Oh, I'm sure they'll find a way around it. But... Uh, what can they offer then if they can no longer cha make changes? There are there are some other enrollment periods that they can use. Um, in fact, January 1st through March 31st is called the open enrollment period. And during that time, if someone is in a Medicare Advantage plan, they can change from one Medicare Advantage plan to another and they have one change. So unfortunately, the calls will not slow down by March 31st. And I mean, my take is these call centers are there, they're being used. 
they'll switch over. They'll, they'll call more for final expense insurance. They'll call more for home improvement. They'll call more for, I mean, I get, I get calls about my roof all the time, my car warranty, stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to slow down the yeah. calls. I think it's just going to change the nature of them a little bit. Mm-hmm. You have a place that you can actually go to now, John and Mr. Williger. You now can go to Bodwell Insurance Solutions at an actual physical address. We absolutely have a boots on the ground home. Um, please stop by if you have questions. We're there. If you don't want us to necessarily come to your home or meet us at a coffee shop or the library, mm-hmm. um, you can definitely come to our office. It's at 115 Aiken Center, Suite 10. We are up on the second floor right uh, next to the VA. Mm-hmm. And we are next to Bell. Belltone? Uh, Belltone's underneath Belltone's us. The underneath. mortgage center. We're we're in the buildings next to um, we're in the buildings next to Haas's. Haas, right. But yeah, the West Virginia uh, Veterans Outreach Center is the next suite over from ours. We've gotten to know those guys really well. They're amazing. They, they are amazing, Absolutely. and they do so much help. Art um, and his partner up there, they do so much help. Um, Arthur's a great guy. They do so much help for veterans in our state. Um, it, it's amazing. And it's great that our state, and I'm going to shout out to them. If you are a veteran and you have questions about benefits or anything, the veteran service center is also at 115 Aiken center. You just come upstairs and right when you get off the elevator and I, I don't know about the elevator, but take, take the stairs. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, but that the veteran service center is right around the corner. Now, some of the, the there's a big problem and I want to, I want to address this first to everyone. There's a big problem with Medicare this year. Um, there are a lot of changes. Um, Medicare Advantage plans have gotten a lot, have gotten a little bit worse this year. Um, we've had some when carriers. You, you mean worse? You mean what by that? Um, the copays have gone up. The maximum out of pockets have gone up. The dental benefits have shrunk. A lot of the benefits inside of the plans have shrunk. Um, the Biden administration made a lot of changes to Medicare this year. Um, there, there's. John, excuse me a second. For someone like you and Michelle that work with us every day, you understand the subtleties of the plan. For most of us, we do not. Uh, could you go back to first principle, Medicare, what it does and what it does not do, Medicare Advantage, what it does not do, that other uh, that supplementals can oh, do? Most definitely. In other words, just kind of give, give us you a, a tutorial. Give a quick yes. Medicare 101. Yeah. I love doing yeah. that. All the different parts. Oh, yes, sir. definitely the best on the Medicare 101. Well, and, and firstly, I mean, there are so many changes, so anyone is going to need to take a look at their plan this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always tell people when I start a Medicare 101 that whether you get a plan from, from a local agent, someone like me or somebody on my team, or you get a plan from, from Joe Namath on TV or right from an insurance carrier or a website or something, you get the exact same plan at the exact same cost. But the difference when you deal with a local agent is you get me. My, my cell phone number is on every single one of my cards. Um, you get somebody who, if you have a question, a problem, or a concern, you reach out and you get me. You're not talking to a call center where you may or may not understand the person. Medicare is made up of a few different parts, okay? First is Medicare Part A. Every time you got a paycheck, it said Medicare on it. They took a little bit of money out. That funded Medicare Part A. And Part A being? Part A is hospitalization. Okay. Um, And and Part A is the part you have to sign up for when you're 65 unless there's a few other conditions that are met? Part A you need to sign up for unless you have – you don't have to sign up for it if you have group, group health. You should still sign up for it unless you are getting a health savings account mm-hmm. because you cannot have a Medicare plan and health sa- and be contributing to a health savings account at the same time. In fact, there has to be like a six-month six month lag once you turn 65. And sign up is only one time. You do not have to renew. You do not have to renew. Um, if you're still working, you sign up for Medicare Part A, which gives you more hospitalization coverage in addition to your group plan and that's the other thing you have to have a group health insurance if you have retiree coverage and you don't sign up for medicare at 65 you will be penalized if you have an individual health plan you will be penalized if you have christian cost sharing you will be penalized you have to sign up for medicare even if you go to va if you have va you need to sign up for your medicare at the age of 65 or there will be penalties moving forward what's the leeway on the birthday john 
65 and you get how long after you turn 65 to sign up? With, within a couple of months, you need to sign up. You uh-huh. don't, there's, there's not a lot of leeway. And the problem with Medicare Part A, and Medicare has a lot of holes in it. Medicare Part A this year has a $1,630 deductible. And what that means is every time you are hospitalized up to five times a year, you will pay a $1,630 deductible. Every time? Every that, time. So that's not the cumulative deductible for the year. That's 1630 day one. Per visit to the hospital. Per visit. And I mean, there's there's some rules that cuts it back. You know, if you're in for the same thing within 60 days, you're not paying it. But it can happen five times a year. So after the fifth time, that's where the catastrophic help kicks in? Well, that's where you're just, you're not having to pay for any hospitalizations at all. Medicare Part B, now that's a little scary, but Medicare Part B is really scary. Medicare Part B, currently you pay $174.70 a month for it. Unless you're higher income, then you pay more. But with Medicare Part B, there's a $240 deductible that's a one-time-for-the-year deductible. After that, it is an 80-20 health plan. Medicare pays 80%, and you pay 20%. Now, there is no cap to that. Like most people, they have a maximum out-of-pocket on their health insurance. There's no cap to that 20%. That 20% includes emergency room, includes doctors, MRIs, includes chemotherapy. 80%, 80%, the Medicare pays 80%, you are responsible for 20% of a chemotherapy episode. Wow. There are people that end up with tens of thousands of dollars in medical bills because all they have is Medicare A and B. There is no cap to it. Okay, uh, for clarification again. Uh, a is strictly hospitalization. Strictly in the hospital. Now, B would be all the ancillary doctor visits, chemotherapy, and the like. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Outpatient surgery. Outpatient, okay. Anything that's not, anything where you're not physically hospitalized. And you can be in the hospital on observation, and that's considered Part B. Yeah. So, I mean, now, part and Part B just goes forever. If you have, if you still have private insurance, does that help with the Part B? Well, the private insurance should work in conjunction with A and B. You know, we don't see a lot of people who have A and B and still on their employer plan because mm-hmm. then they're paying twice. Mm-hmm. If you have stuff like, you know, TRICARE, you can have A, B, TRICARE, and you're, you're covered completely. You're not going to have any bills, um, which is something great we do for our veterans. Mm-hmm. Um, but the problem is, unless you are very, very wealthy or very, very, very indigent, very poor, impecunious, as it were, you would you need to have something, and you need to either have a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare Supplement plan. And I'm going to go through what both of those do. Medicare supplement first. It's been around forever. There's no, there are no networks with the Medicare supplement plan. If a place takes your Medicare, by law, they have to take the supplement. So you can go anywhere in the country, anywhere you want, and you can get a medic, and you're, they will take your Medicare supplement. Quick question again, just for clarification. Supplement applies to both A and B. Yeah, the supplement, okay. uh, the current supplements that's mostly used is what's called Plan G, Supplement Plan G. And what that does is that covers absolutely everything medically except for the Part B deductible. So basically, you pay that $240 this year, and the Medicare supplement plan covers the rest. Now, Medicare supplements start off at about $125, $130 a month when you're 65, and rise $5, $10 a month every year after that until, you know, when you're in your mid-70s, you're probably paying about $250 for it. In addition to that, you also have to have a standalone drug plan. And with the the new rules and the Biden administration got rid of the donut hole, um, where now there's a maximum cost for drugs for any senior of $2,000, okay, where it used to be a lot higher. The catastrophic phase used to start at 8,000. It starts at 2,000 now. So the donut hole no longer exists. donut hole no longer exists, and the maximum that any senior will pay for drugs is $2,000. And that sounds like a really good thing, but when they did that, they also, in the catastrophic phase, the insurance companies used to pay 20% of the cost with Medicare paying the rest. Now the insurance companies have to pay 60%, and they lowered it where you're in the catastrophic phase at 2000 instead of 8000 And then they didn't give the insurance companies the money to basically to make up that difference. Is this Medicare Part D? This is Medicare Part D, yes, and drugs. Is there a, uh, a monthly charge for Medicare Part for D? For individual drug plans, some carriers, yes, 
uh, most carriers, yes. And the cost of the drug plans has risen a lot and will continue to rise. I'm seeing some drug plans this year that are costing people over $100 a month just for the drug plan. And that was unheard of a few years ago. Also, within the plans, the cost of drugs themselves is going up. The co-pays are going up. Because basically what they're having to do is everyone is having to pay more so that the you know 3 to 5% of people that hit the catastrophic phase before pay a lot less. So everyone else is paying more. Are all drugs on the formula? Uh, no. Each carrier sets their formulary. Um, and some drugs are on, some drugs are off. But if you're, and I get this question all the time, say it's the middle of the year, you're on a drug plan, your doctor prescribes something that you really need that's not on the formulary, your doctor will ask for what is called a formulary exception. And what basically happens from there is the doctor says, hey, we tried this, this, and this. They didn't work. We're trying this. And most of the time, the formulary exceptions go through and on a one-time basis, they will add that drug to the formulary just for that one beneficiary, okay. um, which is important. But the Medicare supplement also, the Plan G, covers that 20%. So you don't have to worry about that. Your only out-of-pocket on the medical side is that $240 plus paying the premium. So the average person is paying about $200 a month between the supplement plan and the drug plan. But in exchange for that, they pay $240 out of pocket. They could have, you know, 10 operations, 20 MRIs, you know, a couple rounds of chemotherapy, and they're not going to have any out-of-pocket cost once they pay that $240. So that's that's the supplement uh, part G. That is the supplement is, part G. The, the other, and the other thing it does, which is really important, a lot of people don't know, Medicare does not cover anything out of country except for very limited stuff along a border. And I don't know anybody who wants to be along a border these days. Yeah. Um, but the Medicare supplement plans cover um, cover foreign travel, so you do have health insurance outside of the country. So the Part G seems like a no-brainer to me. Well, it, it has premium to it. Oh, um, $250, $250. Uh, somewhere, yeah. I yeah. mean, between that and the drug plan, you're yeah. going to pay 200 250 yeah. bucks a month. But in exchange for that, you have no network and you have no um, and you have no real no real out of pocket expenses except for the two forty. Medicare Advantage is the other choice. Medicare Advantage plans generally run between about zero and fifty dollars a month. Medicare Advantage plans have copays. Medicare Advantage plans have networks. Okay, and I get people all the time who say, "Well, I don't want to be in the network." What do you mean by that? I well, know it in this case. A, ne a network basically is each insurance company has doctors that are contracted with them. Thank you. A network where you need to stay in a network. A lot of people say, I don't want to be in a network. Well, you've been in a network your entire life, every time you had health insurance. And there's one big advantage to a network. When a doctor becomes a doctor, they are a doctor for life unless they do something really egregious. When a doctor's in a network, if a bunch of people in the network are complaining, they're going to kick them out of the network. It's one, it's one more system, one more vetting that goes through to hopefully, you know, have people know a little bit more about, about the doctors. Now, Medicare Advantage plans have maximum out-of-pockets. They generally range from about six to eight or nine thousand dollars. That is the big difference between them and regular Medicare. If you just have regular Medicare and you become catastrophically ill, you can have corresponding catastrophic medical bills. The Medicare Advantage plans give you a maximum out of pocket. The Medicare Advantage plans also give you a little bit of dental, a little bit of vision, a little bit of hearing. Dental is not covered under Medicare or the supplement. Vision is not covered. Medical vision is. Macular degeneration, cataract, stuff like that are covered under Medicare. But, you know, your annual eye exam, stuff like that, going to, you know, my eye doctor or one of those places is not covered, okay? The main purpose of it is with Medicare Advantage plans, you don't pay premium, really. You pay, or you pay a little bit. So what I like to say is if you are healthier than the average bear, you are going to save a good amount of money on Medicare Advantage, especially since it gives you a little bit of dental, which you're having to pay for, and you're not paying the premium and you're healthy. Medicare Advantage, if you're just of average health, you're going to save a little bit of money. If you are catastrophically ill, you are going to spend more you're going to pay more on Medicare Advantage than you do on Medicare Supplement. And this is the point. Michelle, did you bring the bag today? I left it at the office. Oh, she left the bag. Now, the bag, inside of the bag, we have the crystal ball. 
And what we do with each client is we take the crystal ball out, we rub the crystal ball, and we tell the client how their health is going to be moving forward because that's how you know whether a Medicare Advantage or a Medicare supplement is going to be better for you. Um, all kidding aside, both are good options. A little over 50% of Medicare beneficiaries are on a Medicare Advantage plan at this point. Um, Medicare Advantage 10 years ago was terrible. Five years ago, the networks still weren't that great. These carriers, I mean, their networks around here, they all have Valley Health. They, they mostly have Innova. They all have WVU, obviously. I mean, they've got these gigantic networks. And I have people ask me sometimes, well, what if I travel? What happens if I go down to Florida and I want to see a doctor? Well, Bill, let me ask you this. You travel. What happens? Do you ever, well, let me, if, when you're here, if you call your doctor's office, how long does it take to see a doctor? Yeah, uh, out, outside of emergency, probably three or four months. Well, exactly. Yeah. And if you're traveling, you're not going to see a doctor. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you are traveling and you get sick, you're going to an urgent care, you're going to a, an emergency room. So, I mean, that, that's really not a big deal. The, Amer the Advantage plans also cover foreign travel. Um, now, if you are on a Medicare supplement plan, when you first turn 65 or first go on to Medicare, okay, this is very important, you can get into a Medicare supplement plan. There's a six-month band around your birthday with no medical questions. After that, to get into a Medicare supplement plan, you have to answer medical questions. You have to pass underwriting, okay? That's very important. But if every, you, every time you sign up or just, just one time? Just the one time, one then time. you're in. Okay, yeah. But if you decide you want to leave your Medicare supplement and you want to try Medicare Advantage, the federal government has put in a rule called a trial right. And what the trial right says is you can leave your Medicare supplement you can go to a Medicare Advantage plan for a year, and any time within that year, you can go back to your Medicare supplement with no medical questions. You just go back to the exact one you were on at whatever the cost of it is for your age then, um, which gives people the ability to try, to try Medicare uh, Advantage. I don't advocate for, for either one. Uh, my job and what we do is we educate people, we teach them, we give them all the options, and we educate people so they can make the decision that is best for them, their families, and their health. John, you've provided a lot of information. In fact, you've kind of like the old uh, fire hydrant, a lot of information. When we come back after break, could I ask you to sum it up, kind of the outline form, one sentence or one point? Yes, sir. So kind of put in better perspective for all of us. Most definitely. And I want to, when we come back, I want to talk about some of the changes to Medicare. And I also want to talk about the Medicare plans that are out there um, that help veterans. Michelle, you had a point you wanted to make? I was just going to say that Medicare, when we talk to people, so many people think that they need to be on the same plan as maybe their spouse. And, and it really is a personalized health care. Every single person between their doctors and their medications, that's what makes your Medicare plan. So your husband may have a supplement plan he may be very sick, he might be diabetic, he may have insulin. You may have a wife that's healthy that goes to the gym who has no issues whatsoever. It can be a completely different carrier and a completely different plan. We personalize it to you. I, I wanna point out to her husband, Thomas Terwilliger, one of my very good friends, that he made the wife healthy and the husband sick. That she made the wife healthy and the husband sick. <laughs> watch, watch your back, Thomas. <laughs> Points noted. <laughs> Hey, we stop here. We're back with uh, we're back with more. If you have questions, uh, by the way, about Medicare, and we have a lot of uh, seniors who listen to the program, feel free to call us at two six three six five four zero. You can talk to John and Michelle directly here. I know Bill has a question for you, but just before we get to that, where do you go to sign up for Medicare, and how do you know it's the right site, and not some scam site? Well, that's that's really easy to to directly sign up for Medicare on your own. You go to socialsecurity.gov. You sign up for Medicare with Social Security, and then they transfer everything over to Medicare, and Medicare administers it. But Social Security verifies that you have the quarters you need because you have to, to get Medicare Part A at no cost, you have to have 40 quarters of work in America or a spouse with 40 quarters of work. Um, and it's really easy. You can sign up there. You can call 1-800-SOCIAL-SECURITY. Um, you can call... And I, I'm not even going to give the number because I do not recommend that. Oh, it um, takes forever to get through. Well, and, and I recommend a movie, and I'm not talking like a romantic comedy. Uh, Braveheart, 
you know, put Braveheart on. It's almost three hours. You may get through to Social Security before it's over. Get in touch with your local Social Security office. A lot of times the best way is just to show up there. And if they can see you, they will. You can sign up for Medicare, look at your Social Security benefits. If they cannot see you, they will set you for an appointment at the local office. Um, but, yeah, but calling calling the, the main Social Security number is, is horrible. The um, Or you can reach out to us, 304-283-0864 is my number. We're at 115 Aiken Center, Suite 10. Um, I, I've sat down with a lot of people. We get the computer out, and we show them how to sign up. And I've walked people through signing up for Medicare on the Social Security website. So if you're not comfortable with the computer and you'd like some help, just give us a call, and, and I can or somebody else in my office. We have we, we have a pretty large staff of agents at this point. We have a pretty large staff of agents, and we've got we got a lot of people who can who can sit down and can help you wind through the process. Because as we were talking, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up from when we were talking off the air, Bill said it's just so confusing, yeah. and it is confusing, and don't get taken in by call centers. And I I will tell somebody what I tell my clients is. If you're spending hours and hours reading stuff and trying to learn as much as you can and you're still confused, don't be alarmed by that because everyone is confused by that, okay? That is why I, I don't change my own oil because I don't know how to. I don't, I don't understand, you know, being an admiral, obviously. I don't understand how to work the this, this silly board in here that Rob does. Like it's, like it's a... It is silly. Well, no, I mean, he, so. he's moving stuff up and down and, and without even thinking. I don't know how to do that. We know Medicare. We've learned it. We are licensed insurance agents. We are. Um, we have to take a federal class test every year called AHIP. We have to go through all sorts of continuing education. We're in meetings with carriers. We are. It's what we do. We analyze. We look. We help people understand Medicare, and we help them enroll in, in the best plan possible. We educate people. We help them enroll. I mean, Bill was saying off the air how difficult. What, what were you saying, Bill? Well, yeah, it's difficult to understand. But let me kind of come back to the point I was going to ask anyway. Uh, the first 30 minutes, John, was a font of information. I learned a lot, but it was overwhelming with the yes. amount of information. You mentioned four, at least four Medicare plans, A, B, D and G, could you? And there may be one one that I sure. overlook. Would you, in probably ninety seconds or less, just summarize those four to kind of put them in perspective for us? Medicare Part A, you do not pay for; you paid for with every paycheck. That is when you are actually hospitalized. Medicare B, this year currently, the average person pays one hundred and seventy four seventy a month. There's a $240 deductible, and then it's an 80-20 health plan with no cap, no maximum out-of-pocket. And that covers everything except hospitalization. That's everything but hospitalization yeah. and, and, and drugs. It okay. doesn't cover drugs. Okay. It covers chemotherapy yeah. and stuff like yeah. that, but not pharmaceuticals. Uh, Part D, that's pharmaceuticals. And if you say, hey, I don't, I don't take any medications, I don't need to have a drug plan, well, I can tell you I had a lady two years ago who she signed a sheet. Middle of the year, she was 75 years old. All of a sudden, she got a bunch of illnesses. She ended up paying thousands of dollars for her drugs, and then she's paying a penalty for the rest of her life. The federal government charges a penalty equal to 1% of the average drug plan in America times the amount of months you did not have drug coverage past the age of 65. Now, I want to clarify something because this is something that comes up a lot that people don't understand. VA coverage, TRICARE, federal retirement, all that is credible coverage for drug coverage as of now. In 2026, a lot of that may change because the Medicare rules are changing, okay? For now, those all work as credible coverage. They are not credible coverage for Medicare Part B. You have to get on Medicare Part B either when you turn 65 or when you leave your employer group plan or you will pay penalties. And the penalties after two years of not having B are 10% per month of the cost. So, I mean, if you've been a few years, all of a sudden, instead of paying 170, 174.70, you're paying 174.70 plus 10 or 20% of that on a monthly well, basis. John, what if you didn't get those plans because you're poor and you can't afford them? What sense does it make to penalize you even more financially for being poor? 
It's just the uh, the cost of Medicare. But if you are abjectly poor, and that's a great question, Rob. If you are abjectly poor, there is what is called Medicaid. And that is something I was going to cover moving forward. West Virginia Medicaid. Before we go there, uh, we'll come back to Medicaid 8 in just a second. Well, you've covered three of the four. Give us a quick synopsis of G, please. Uh, G is a Medicare supplement plan. It does exactly what it says. It supplements Medicare. If Medicare pays for something, it picks up the difference. If it's something Medicare does not pay for, the G plan does not touch except foreign travel. And the other option is Medicare Advantage. And most Medicare Advantage plans include the A, the B, and the D into one plan called Part C, which is Medicare Advantage. And they all are lumped in together. And basically, unless you are are very wealthy or or very poor, you need to have a Medicare supplement or a Medicare Advantage, or you could possibly be leaving yourself open to catastrophic bills. Getting back to what Rob was saying, uh, Medicaid, um, a lot of times for low-income people, will pay the 17470 for them. Medicaid will pay the Part B premium for most low-income seniors. Um, And what Medicaid also does is Medicaid picks up a lot of the difference for seniors on Medicare where the the co-pays and stuff, if you are, and there are income levels to it, Medicaid will pick up the difference. Um, There's also uh, something called the low-income subsidy or extra help. Medicaid is a state program. It's federal pass-through money, but it is a state program. The low-income subsidy or extra help on prescriptions is a federal program, okay? And that is applied for with Social Security, once again. Medicaid is applied for with the state. The low-income subsidy helps to take down the premium cost on drug plans, and depending on your level of low-income subsidy, it takes down the cost of medications, and it can take down the cost of medications a lot. So there are mechanisms to help lower-income seniors, most definitely. And I run into a lot of people where I run into people where they don't have they they have, are very very low income, and they're like, I'm struggling to pay this, and I got to pay that. And I'm like, Well, have you applied for Medicaid? Have you applied for the low-income subsidy? I, I didn't know I could. I don't know what the low-income subsidy is. And we're able to educate people about that. So if you know any low-income seniors, please just ask them a question. Say, look, there are programs out there to help you, federal and state. Yes, Michelle. I just wanted to say uh, we've run into a lot of people recently that have lost Medicaid. So they've lost their Medicaid, and now they're struggling because how are they going to have health insurance? Do you want to explain that? Well, yeah. Medicaid, um, for about three and a half years, there was no uh, recertification of Medicaid. During COVID, everybody and their mother, you know, if you were laid off for three days, you got on Medicaid and you could keep it for three years. This past year, they started having the recertifications again. And a lot of seniors, especially lower income seniors, sometimes they may not be the most astute. They may not pay attention to stuff as much. And we've run into a lot of seniors that pl- just plain lost their Medicaid. It wasn't that their income rose and that they no longer qualified. It's that they didn't fill out the paperwork to recertify. So we've, done a, we've helped a lot of seniors go through the recertification process to get their Medicaid back. So Medicaid is once again paying the 17470 or is giving them, um, giving them the extra support that they need to pay the co-pays, to pay the co-insurance and stuff like that. I also, if you are not eligible for Medicaid, low-income subsidy, stuff like that, if you are a senior and you are hospitalized and you do not have money to pay your hospital bills, always ask the hospital for the low-income form. There are federal programs that the hospitals all participate in where you can fill, and a lot of times they will forgive portions of, if not all, of your hospital bill. So don't, you you worked hard your whole life. Things have gotten very expensive. Don't be too proud or too shy to ask for help because there are a lot of programs out there that are designed to help, that are designed to help people. You led in my next question. Uh, For a lot of folks, especially low income, uh, going to emergency room is the fault condition, is the default. If they can't do anything else, they just go to the emergency room. Uh, Is there any, are there any financial avenues to offset this cost for the hospitals? Um, Federal, there are federal programs that offset the cost. 
I mean, there, there's there's federal money that's given back to back to hospitals, and I don't know what the formula is, but that's not just for people on Medicare. That's for anyone low income who yeah, comes in, yeah. and that's why they've got to get them to fill out the low income forms, because if you just go in and 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 you don't pay your bill, there's not there's there's really not much they can do. But if if they've demonstrated, okay, this person didn't pay their bill and they are low income, then there are federal programs that can help them. That's why they're adamant about getting people to fill out. You know the the financial forms if you're if you're uninsured or underinsured, um, there are for people on Medicaid there there are programs called what are called dual health plans which are for people with Medicare and Medicaid, and all of you see the commercials and probably get the stupid phone calls from the call centers like I do I'm 56 and I'm on a list I get 20 25 calls a day, I'm on a first name basis with people who make up fake names because I I know his name is not Michael or Joe. Um, but these plans do exist, um, but they are for, you know, a very small percentage of the population, people who are dual eligible, meaning they have Medicare and Medicaid. And these plans do a lot for people. They, they give them some dental, some vision. A lot of these plans do have a flex card an over the counter card where they, they can even get healthy food sometimes. So there, there are many avenues. Um, and it, it, this this economy that we're in um, has been bad, and I see people talking about oh the stock market's up great so people with money have made money and that's wonderful, but for your your average to low income people especially seniors, it's it's unbelievable how much of a struggle it is just to eat at this point in this economy with the way prices have risen, and I encourage anyone out there if you if you've hesitated to call social services. If you're a senior and you've hesitated to call social services, please do. Tell them you want to apply for Medicaid. Get in touch with your local social security office. Tell them you want to apply. Because we run into seniors who say, I, I can't afford to eat. I certainly can't afford to get my medicine. Talk to social security. Get on the extra help. Because the extra help lowers the cost of prescriptions down so far that, I mean, you hopefully can afford it. And I mean, and there's the, the federal insulin program now where there are insulins on every single Medicare plan that are $35 a month. Okay. Which, I mean, some of these insulins, insulins, if without that cap would be hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So just make sure you are taking advantage of all of the programs that are out there to help people. Because what I'm finding is I'm finding people in their seventies and eighties who, yeah, when they retired, their social security was fine. They were doing okay, but the cost of living has risen much faster than the COLA. And the COLA's cost of living adjustment that comes through on Social Security pretty much every year. That has not kept up with the cost of living, especially for middle to lower income people. There's, there's, there's no shame in asking for help, okay? It is there. That is what it is there for. If you work through your lifetime, you have a Social Security that's not doing what you need it to do at this point, please. Go to Medicaid. Go to the social service office. Tell them you need Medicaid. They may sign you up for other programs also. And the low-income subsidy has a higher threshold. Sign up for stuff. It's it's. I, I can't say enough. There are programs out there to help people, and people need to take advantage of them. And as an adjunct to that, John, these programs do not cost anything. So the phone no. call is free. The service is free. Yes, sir. And that and that's the other thing. Our service is free. Yes. We get paid by the insurance companies. There is no one ever pays us a penny. Whether you, whether you come to us or you, you go online or you go to an insurance company or an 800 number or, or somebody who calls you, you get the exact same plans at the exact same cost. But when you come to us, you get us. You get our expertise. You get the fact that clients of mine call me on a Sunday afternoon. I'll answer the phone. I, I get back to them. I talk to them. I, I am their advocate. I'm there if they have a question, a concern, a problem. Yeah, and you do very well. I'm one of your clients, and you've, you've been very, very responsive to our request. The only thing he's ever charged me, Rob, is for a beer. He does charge me for a beer. <laughs> yes, 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 without a doubt. It's root beer for me, though, because I don't drink, but still. No, it's uh, – Second I, one's on Michelle, by the way. Yeah. Second one's on Michelle. Yeah. I got you an A&W, absolutely. Yeah. But, no, but it's – um. I mean, why I do what I do is to help people. 
and we do a lot of work. We go to uh, we go to the rescue mission. We go to uh, we go to a lot of food banks, and we we talk to people. And it's amazing how many people are eligible for benefits and not getting them, and are not getting everything they deserve. John, we have a lot of seniors in the in this area, and a lot of them listen to this program here. And when we do this program, inevitably after the show is over, I'll get a couple of calls that'll ask me questions. I'll refer them to you or give them uh, your number or whatever. Uh, what can you tell these seniors about scams and responding to these scams, specifically about uh, Medicare and Social Security and any preventative tips that you can give them, Michelle? I can tell you whatever you do, do not give your Medicare number over the phone. My 97-year-old grandmother lives with us. We take care of her full time. And I just walked in on Friday with somebody asking her, well, you're going to lose your insurance. I need to make sure everything is going to be okay. And I need your Medicare number to look up to verify all of the information is correct. And I literally walked in, grabbed her phone and said, do not give anybody your number. That's the biggest thing. These people, unfortunately, they, they take advantage of seniors. When we moved my grandmother out of her home, we had baskets of mail and letters and all of these things that they wanted her information from. Just don't give any information. Why Jonathan and I are so passionate and our agents are so passionate at Bodwell Insurance is because we have all had family members that have been taken advantage of somewhere, friends, neighbors, that have been taken advantage of. And the most important thing is, is to be able to sit down with them look at their card, look at their number, look at their doctors, look at their prescriptions, and make sure that they are in the right plan for them. How does a senior know when there's a legitimate request from Medicare or Social Security? Does it arrive in a particular oh, form? That's easy, yeah. I mean, it'll be an official letter, and a lot of places will send out letters that, that look official that aren't. Um, my, my feeling is don't ever talk to somebody over the phone that you don't know. I mean, if somebody's calling from an 800 number, you don't know them. Do not talk to them. Do not, don't, don't engage with them because there are too many scams out there for seniors that, I mean, are, are scary. I mean, deal, deal with local agents or deal directly with an insurance company. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're calling in to, directly to an insurance company, you're calling the membership number on your card, you're calling directly to an insurance company, that's legitimate. But a voice over the phone saying, hey, you know, there's there's something wrong with your insurance. Uh, I need your number. Don't just don't just don't talk to. I, I tell all my clients, do not talk to anyone but us. Just call me. That's phenomenal advice and something we should all heed. But it extends beyond the insurance. The case in point, I received a text message from UPS the other day, that and very small amount of money, fifty cents. Uh, but I made a mistake by being sucked in, and I gave them. My credit card number, stupidest thing I've ever done. And then that whole cascade of action I had to take. It did not cost me a dime, but right. it cost me a lot of time. So it extends far beyond just the insurance. It extends to our everyday life. So Every anything day. that doesn't look right, don't respond if to it, it. Yeah, if you think it's and, – and, Bill, if, if just to be sure, if you want to share that credit card number now, <laughs> yeah. you know, so we, we got it. <laughs> but <laughs> since you're on air, just go Say ahead and it out loud, Bill. Yeah. Just read it right now. I right will. Now. It's <laughs> boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's just, just be safe, but deal with a local agent. Yeah. Um, if you deal with a local agent, you can come to my office. You can call me. I'll help you. But the other thing is a voice over the phone. It doesn't call – Getting it directly from a carrier, getting it from someone like, like me, my group, or other groups of agents in the area, and there, there are plenty of fine agents in the area. I contribute to local sports teams. Yeah. Yeah. I contribute to, we, did the, we went to the Children's Home Society function Friday night over at Aspen Hall. We contributed to that. We contributed to the Senior Center's uh, big dinner that they had. We are, we are in the community. We are here locally. We help people in our community. One minute to go uh, again. Uh, open enrollment for Medicare and co uh, concludes begins and concludes when? What dates? October fifteenth through December seventh. And you need 15th, to get December seventh. And and this year more than ever, you need to get your plan reviewed. And if you don't have an agent who is reaching out or sending you a letter asking you if you want to be reviewed, call us or call a local agent. Um, basically, because the plans have changed so much this year. There are more changes this year than any year in the last 10 at least. 
So you need to make sure you still have the best coverage, the right coverage for you for the coming year, because there can be thousands of dollars in difference. And you can also see them in person now, Bodwell Insurance Solutions at what address? 115 Aiken Center, Suite 10, Martinsburg, West Virginia, right next to the VA office, by the Hosses, and what's or the right fo- upstairs. What's the phone number? 304-283-0864. Back with a final minute right after these. 